about 11% of all the houses in America are vacant. But that doesn't mean they're empty. Many of these houses are unlivable, filled to the brim with mold, decay, and danger. I went into one of these houses searching for treasure. I braved the broken glass, the animal excrement, and likely personal harm to save relics from another time. My name is Blake, this is a hoarder house, and today we're going to uncover both the weird and the rare, all in the hopes of making a profit. You're probably wondering why it's 8 a.m. I've got 10 extra large Home Depot Lowe's <laughs> boxes. And then I'm just drinking some tape while I'm doing a hoarder house book clean out today. So that should be exciting. Nick, thank you very much for the referral. He's a viewer. And uh, we're going to go. Apparently, it's two 90 year olds who never owned a phone. That was the pitch to me. So I'm paying uh, per box and we're going to go find some good stuff. Here's how it looks. You just told me every room is there's just books everywhere. Top to bottom, another set as well. I guess he means he's gonna buy the house and he bought it and now he's flipping it. So he said I can go through here and pick out pick out the good stuff. So we're going through all the stuff now. I found some really old books down here. This is mostly what I'm going for. A lot of this stuff, unfortunately, is uh like fiction from like grocery stores, that kind of stuff, where there's not really any resale value, even bundling it up. But older stuff like this. Uh, without looking it up, I just know there's a buyer for, this is probably from 819, no, 1800s probably. Yeah, 1891. Here's an example of some books I thought might be worth picking out because the author's all the same. It's Laverle Spencer. Right there, you can tell. Uh, unfortunately though, they only go for about, in lots, like about 50 cents a book, which is, uh, I mean, maybe, there's enough where it's worth it, but in terms of like the space they would take up in my warehouse, I don't want to have a whole banker's box that I make $8 on. I quickly realized that I was a little over my head. Although the initial room looked relatively clean, every other room was in a chaotic state of decay, normally reserved for natural disasters and riots. Books, broken glass, and beer cans were thrown everywhere. As the professional clean-out workers were pulling away the furniture, they threw everything else on the floor for me to sift through, and I had to work fast. My initial strategy of using extra large boxes was a bad one. The boxes were just too heavy, and I couldn't carry a 200-pound box up the narrow flights of stairs. The basement, undoubtedly, held more great treasures, but I needed to adapt, and fast or else all the value I was looking for might be thrown away. The cleanout workers, after all, were paid by the dumpster, and I was paid by the relic. I underestimated how heavy those books would be, so I had to double box everything, so we ran out of boxes, so we're going to get more boxes. But the good news is, is now I can buy smaller boxes and really uh, easily do those trips up and down the stairs because there's a lot of books. I'm sitting in the U-Haul, got my boxes, and I just want to like reflect on how I'm very grateful and thankful for this opportunity. I'm going to make some money. Uh, these books are going to go to somebody who wants them. There's a lot of like old rare books that I'm sure people are going to be happy to have. And it's like exciting and cool to like do new things and grow my business. And like if I can do more picks like this, clean outs, that kind of stuff, the it's like the the treasure hunting part of it is so rewarding and i just want to make sure that like i appreciate every second of this because you know time is fleeting revitalized and thankful for the opportunities before me i came back to the hoarder house with newfound vigor i pulled books vhs tapes collectible cases, anything I could find, clean, and then sell to someone. Not only keeping these items out of landfills, but also giving someone, somewhere, a chance to reconnect with their past. Many of these books were more than 100 years old, some over 200, and they had been rotting in the basement of a forgotten house in southeastern Michigan for decades. Okay, so it's all done. Cargo van full. All said and done, cost of the van. 
cost of the books, 300 bucks. So we'll see how fast I can earn that back. And uh, we'll go, I mean, we're not gonna go over everything individually, but we'll get an idea when I go back to my warehouse and unload this.